In this video, we will be talking about the Wilson's disease. The Wilson's disease is also known as hepatolenticular degeneration. Hepato means liver and lenti means the lentiform nucleus or the lenticular nucleus which comprises of the putamen and the globus pallidus within the basal ganglia. The Wilson's disease is an autosomal recessive disease, which means that if the father and the mother are carriers, then the probability of the child being normal is 25%, of being affected is 25%, and of them being carriers is 50%. Before discussing about the pathogenesis of the Wilson's disease, first let's talk about an essential mineral element that is copper. A normal healthy individual consumes about 2 to 3 mg of copper every day. But actually the need is only 0.75 mg per day. So the rest is excreted, the major chunk by the bile which ends up in the fecal matter and the rest by the urine. The excess free copper goes to the liver via the portal circulation and enters the hepatocyte. There in the hepatocyte it gets incorporated into a protein called apocelluloplasmin. This protein can take up a total of six copper molecules and after incorporation the molecule is now called ceruloplasmin which gets secreted into the blood. The excess copper within the hepatocytes that is not incorporated into the ceruloplasmin is sequestered in the lysosomes and is transported into the bile which eventually is excreted in the feces. In Wilson's disease, the ATP7B gene that lies on chromosome 13 is mutated. Because of this mutation, the incorporation of copper into apocelluloplasmin is impaired and inhibits ceruloplasmin secretion into the blood. It also decreases the transport of copper into the bile. All this results in excess accumulation of copper in the hepatocyte. The excess copper that is accumulated in the liver can react with hydrogen peroxide to form free radicals and these free radicals are responsible for tissue damage. This reaction is known as Fanton's reaction. Other than producing free radicals, the free copper ions can also bind to the sulfhydryl groups of the cellular proteins. These free ions can also displace the other metals from the metalloenzymes of the hepatic cells. All the three mechanisms that we have discussed lead to toxic injury. The hepatocyte injury causes the non ceruloplasmin bound copper, that is the free copper, to be spilled into the blood and accumulate in certain tissues like the basal ganglia, the eye, and the liver where it all began. By accumulating in the basal ganglia, it can cause movement disorders and rigid dystonia. In the eye, we can see Kaiser flesher rings. It is a visible brown colored ring that is produced by the accumulation of copper in the descemens membrane of the cornea. And by its accumulation in the liver, it can cause fatty liver which can lead to liver cirrhosis. Now let's talk about the morphology of the liver in Wilson's disease. The first is steatosis that is the fatty change and it may be present with focal hepatocyte necrosis. There can also be acute liver failure. But if there is chronic Wilson's disease in an individual, he or she will exhibit portal inflammation along with steatosis and necrosis. The inflammation can be mild or moderate or it can also be severe. And finally there is cirrhosis of the liver. Now coming on to the blood picture of the Wilson's disease, first is decreased level of ceruloplasmin. The reason behind this is that we all know when copper binds with epocelluloplasmin, it gets converted into ceruloplasmin. But due to the mutation of ATP7B gene, there is impairment in the binding of copper to the epocelluloplasmin. As a result, epocelluloplasmin is left alone and it is unstable and it gets degenerated. The next is 
increased copper levels in the blood which results in increased copper levels in the urine the next is hemolytic anemia it is because the increased copper levels in the blood causes damage to the rbc which results in hemolysis now finally coming on to the treatment part the first are copper chelators the funda behind using copper chelators is if all the free copper gets chelated there is no free copper left to cause toxic injury in the body the examples of copper chelators are penicillamine and trientine the second is zinc based therapy zinc stops the absorption of copper in the gut the third is liver transplant it is done only if the cirrhosis is unmanageable and uncontrollable so this is all about the pathology of the wilson's disease if you have any doubts regarding this you can always mention them in the comment section